Ah! <laughs> Saved your life. Now you have to subscribe. Peace. Aloha, welcome to the video. Uh, so this week I'm going to be finishing up my ball-headed war club. And this is actually going to be quite a bit different. Well, I say quite a bit different. A more traditional Native American ball-headed war club will have a very pronounced ball shape at the head of the club. <laughs> Which I know sounds really stupid to say it like that, but uh, mine isn't going to have such of a pronounced uh, curvature for a couple of reasons. One, um, I didn't make my a laminated section wide enough. Um, that's not true. I could make it a full ball. It'd just be really small, and I didn't like the dimension of that. I really needed to make it quite a bit larger if I wanted to go for that shape. And the other reason, and the more substantial reason for me, is I really wanted the shape of the club to kind of differ, to add in some of my own personal influences and my own design styles. So it's heavily influenced off of the Native American style, uh, but it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more towards something that uh, I would do or some of the pieces that I make. So I'm going to go ahead and start shaping. <laughs> so where we left off last week is I had glued everything together. Now everything is nice and solid. I can go ahead and start uh, grinding it down and shaping it down. Uh, I'm using my angle grinder here. I use this for just about everything. Um, I've gotten pretty decent with it. I'd say if it's the one skill I have, is I, I feel like I'm pretty decent with the angle grinder. Um, I'm able to actually put in some of the fine details with the angle grinder. Now, obviously, I will be coming back and doing a lot of sanding, um, some edge work, some chisel work, but uh, I'm able to do quite a bit of the shaping all the way down, um, and which includes some of the edge work with the angle grinder itself. And I'm just using a disc grinder. Um, I don't use, there's a couple other discs that are out there. There's some that are actually made just for sh grinding. I don't, or not grinding, but shaping. I don't use those because they bite too much and um, they kind of terrify me. <laughs> so here is the Marlin bill that I'm going to be using as the spike. Uh, I was just kind of playing around with potentially using the entire bill, but that'd be way too large of a spike. It just wouldn't be very ruly. Um, it'd be too difficult to utilize. So I'm going to be cutting this down quite a bit, and then I'm going to be insetting it into the head of the club. Um, you actually see this on a lot of ball-headed clubs, although usually it's a metal spike. Um, Although I have seen deer antler as well, so this would be similar to a deer antler. Um, I'm going to be putting it in similar to like a mortise and tenon joint. Um, but I'm, usually what I would do is I'd put the bill in, and then I would put a cross peg, and that would be a mechanical hold. So even though I'm going to glue it, that'd be a mechanical hold to keep it in place. Um, I'm not going to be doing that with this piece, primarily because the bill's a little bit thin, and I, I don't really want the look of that cross peg. Um, I want the outside of the club to look a little bit more uniform. Um, so instead I'm just going to be epoxying it into place and I made sure to cut the inset really tight, really close. Um, so that way when I go to epoxy it, it'll be a nice solid hold. The other thing that I did, which you can't tell from any of the videos, is on the inside, I actually made the inside a little bit wide. So it kind of mushrooms on the inside. And the point of that is so that I'll fill around it with epoxy and that'll give it a nice solid hold so that it definitely can't pull out. Um, but before I can put in the bill, I have to almost finish the piece. So I've, I've finished all of my rough shaping with the angle grinder and now I'm gonna be working on uh, sanding. Because there's a lot of open edges, I can utilize my disc sander for quite a bit. Um, but there's still quite a bit of corners and fine details that I'll need to go back and forth between my chisel and metal file and uh, hand sanding. And there's, so there's a lot of steps, really less so much steps and more just a lot of back and forth and making sure that all of the edges are nice and clean. Um, I kind of debated heavily as to whether or not I wanted to round the handle, round the edges. Um, I originally wanted to lash the handle section. Uh, just so that you know, you'd have some good cordage there. It'd be a nice hold. 
but this piece of coal wood here is just absolutely gorgeous just unbelievably beautiful you can't really tell it from the videos but man is it just striking um, even before i oiled it i could just see all the curls in fact you can kind of see them there um, and so i knew it was going to be beautiful and so what i decided to do is instead of rounded rounding the handle um, and you can kind of see it here i have these edges these tapers that are on all of the corners and that actually adds a substantial amount of grip. So it's a lot easier to hold um, and index with the piece. And that way I won't have to wrap it. And then it, it widens at both ends. So it just your hands just sink into it and it feels really good. Um, I spent, oh man, so many hours just going back and forth and cleaning it up. I really, really wanted clean, crisp edges. Um, I didn't want any of the edges to blend in so that when you're holding it and when you're inspecting it, it really looks nice and clean. It looks like it's holding onto that ball headed section. Uh, and then I decided to do a small taper from the ball headed section to where it comes into the bill. Um, I did that primarily just so that I'd have a little bit more material for insetting in the bill. And I thought it would look kind of cool. Um, overall, I did like the look. My wife said it looked a little bit like a duck. <laughs> which I had to agree with her. It does kind of look a little bit like a duck. <laughs> I think it's because of that back end tail section. Uh, but now that I have it sanded down to 220, I'm going to go ahead and put in the Marlin bill here. Um, I'm putting grooves into the Marlin bill. And what those are going to do is just, those are going to act as little sections that the epoxy can hook into and it'll really hold that bill into place. So it'd be extremely difficult, if not impossible to rip this out. Um, obviously with enough force you could do it, but um, you definitely wouldn't be able to do it with your hands. It's not going to knock loose in testing. It's going to be in there pretty solid. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put in this epoxy. I mixed it with uh, wood shavings just so it blend in a little bit more. And I let that sit for about 24 hours and now I'm back at it finishing sanding. And so now I'm sanding up to 320. Because I have the bill in place, um, some of these sections are a little bit harder to get to. But it's still not that bad. Um, it just took a little bit longer to get in the, the 320 grit. <sighs> so my camera flipped out. <laughs> so usually what I do is I get ready and then I, I pause the video and I start the video and I go to oil it. That way I, it's easier for editing and the camera literally this video section froze. And so I, I missed the entire oiling. So here's the finished oiled piece. We just get a skip right to the end of the oil piece. <laughs> oh, I was so mad. I was so upset because it's such a beautiful piece. And the way that it oiled was just unbelievably gorgeous. Um, but the good news is, is you get to skip that section if you're not interested and move right to the finished piece. <laughs> now, luckily today, or the day that I, I recorded this, uh, it was a little bit overcast. So the glare of the sun's not there. But look at that curl, just absolutely gorgeous. I really love the edge work that I put into this piece. Um, the laminated sections of coal wood make the top section just look absolutely awesome. The bill is just beefy. Oh man, that thing is just solid and it has a nice point. I did sand down the edge so it has a nice point. It feels really good in the hand. I couldn't wait to test with this. I was so unbelievably excited to test with this. So we're just going to get straight into testing. This piece was just, I was excited. So these first couple tests are just on the ballistics gel. Um, I just want to see if, how well it'll stab in and man, I, little to no effort. And it's about four inches, the, the bill is, and it just stabs right in. So I'm not even going to hit very hard from here. Like that's probably 60% and it just stabbed in. So this would, easily stab into any soft sections if you get hit in the chest or the side or the stomach or anywhere anywhere that's not the skull so i decided i'm going to just skip straight to some of the fruit <laughs> so i grabbed the pineapple because pineapple is actually pretty tough but funny enough it was too soft this piece was just shredding it and so i never got like a good stab it was just shredding the pineapple to, to pieces and it wasn't like an overripe pineapple either. It was a pretty solid piece, but it's just too soft. Uh, and you can see there, just shredding it into pieces. 
So I went and grabbed these. Uh, this is like a squash pumpkin. I'm not entirely sure, but it's really hard, really solid. Doesn't break very easy. Um, I've actually damaged teeth with it, and it just punctured right in. Look at that. Oh my gosh. And that's with very little force. And you can see here, so I just barely tapped it on, and it punctures it in about 50% of the way of that bill. And then when I add any force at all, it just stabs all the way in. So this, I, I have no question, this would just demolish. Like this would just stab right into your head. <laughs> so now I'm going to be hitting it with the back section, um, which is also kind of a spike, but it's a lot wider, it's a lot thicker. It's really meant to be more of a blunt force edge. Um, it just has some nice grip into it. So this is another squash that also has an extremely thick, hard outside. In fact, you'll see here, I hit that pretty solid, a nice strong hit. And it did almost nothing to it. I mean, it did crack it all the way around, um, but n not nearly what I was expecting it to do. So I decided to hit this one again with the back end. And I was, wasn't hitting it square, and it was just gouging it which is actually pretty nasty. Like that's, oh, that would be so painful just because it has that kind of hook in it. Man, so this piece is just unbelievably deadly and it feels really good in the hand on both sides. Um, whether you're holding it front side, back side, it just feels really good in the hand and it just destroys whatever you hit with it. <laughs> if I had an absolute blast with this, I could have tested with this for just hours and hours. It was a ton of fun. Thank you everyone that's uh, stayed for the end and watched the whole video, or if you just skipped to the end to watch the testing. Either way, it's great. <laughs> well, I really enjoyed it. Uh, if you liked it, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. It really helps out a lot. And if you're interested in this piece, send me a message on my Instagram, and it will be put up available for sale. Well, I'll see you next time. Aloha.